Let's start with the question. Tell me what's common between coffee, beer, tomato ketchup and vitamin C. The answer, they are all acidic. And that little detail makes a huge difference in the world of skincare. Hello and welcome to the Lab Coat. I am Shankar Prasad and here's where we talk about chemistry and the world of skincare. So acidity sounds like you know something we're all not happy with but so is alkalinity if it goes out of whack. The easiest way to measure acidity or alkalinity is something called pH. pH is a measure of something being alkaline or acidic. The pH scale goes all the way from a 0 to a 14 but it's important to understand that most things in life fall in 0 to 14 range. Something like water that we drink every day falls at around 7, 6.5 to 7. Something like your stomach where sometimes it goes out of whack and we complain of acidity is already at a pH of 2 and just as an aside that pH of 2 is good enough to dissolve a paper clip not saying you should swallow it but that's how strong a pH of 2 can get. And coming to the world of skincare, the skin that we have has a pH of 5.5 which is slightly acidic. Remember 7 is neutral so 5.5 makes it somewhat acidic. Now you can ask me why does skin need to have an acidic pH? Any guesses on why the skin has a slightly acidic pH? The reason we have a slightly acidic pH is because even though the atmosphere around us looks all sterile and nice and calm, we are under attack all the time by microbes and your skin is your first layer of defense against microbes entering your body whether we realize it or not. And there are millions of microbes right as I am talking which are looking to sort of get past the barrier that's on my skin. And the easiest way to feed microbes and get them to grow bigger is to give them a very benign pH of 7. They'll be very happy. At pH 5.5, they're not going to be happy. And that's what your skin does at a pH of 5.5. So when we say something is pH balanced for your skin, it means that it is going to be friendly to a skin pH of 5.5. Now take soap for example, that much vilified piece of a bar of soap that we all say I don't use soap, I am soap free and so on. Why soap gets that bad name partly is because it's got a pH of 10.5 when it is dissolved in water. A 10.5 pH of soap means it is extremely alkaline and when your skin is at 5.5, the moment these two come in contact, there's going to be a problem with the soap getting onto skin and disturbing the pH balance of skin and turning the acidic not so acidic. And you might say, you know, a 5.5, a 10.5, it's just a different of a difference of just five points. But the interesting thing is pH scale is a logarithmic scale. It's logarithm, logarithmic scale. Now, what a logarithmic scale means is that a difference of just one unit there gives rise to a 10x difference. Therefore, a stomach being at 2 versus a skin at a 5.5 versus soap at 10.5, that's a huge difference in the pH scale. It's almost spanning the entire spectrum of what is acidic and what is alkaline. Now, very specifically, therefore, when your skin has a pH of 5.5, we all saw that soap can be disruptive to the pH that your skin has. Should you use something at 5.5? Should you use something at 7? Should you use something that is at 3, 3.5? What is good for your skin? The important thing to realize in all of this is balance. People have used soap for centuries and gotten away. So it's not as if the soap is just going to come and scrape your skin off. It's not that. If you are able to cleanse your skin properly, re-moisturize it, keep it healthy, you still can use high pH substances and live to tell the story. But normal day-to-day -day basis, what I would advise you to do is stick to things which are close to the neutral to slightly acidic range. So if you are selecting a cleanser, select something that's probably closer to a 5.5, 6 or a 7 or maybe an 8. Uh, ask your brand what the pH is if they are not already telling you. Similarly, when you are using moisturizers, there is absolutely no reason for you to stay away from your skin pH of 5.5 because cleansing still needs some level of action. Moisturization is just adding goodness to your skin and that should happen as close to the skin pH as possible unless of course it has ingredients like vitamin C which need to function at a slightly more acidic level let's say at a pH of 4. But when it comes to things like actives laden serums 
For example, take vitamin C serum. A vitamin C serum given to you at a pH of 6 is probably useless because the ascorbic acid needs to be ascorbic acid. That means a pH close to even 3.5 or 4. Therefore, here is why people using actives are always advised to take a step by step. Start small, move up in small steps. Take those actives that make your skin breathe, make your skin remain balanced, make sure that the barrier function of your skin is not disrupted. So that's the fundamental of balancing things on your skin with respect to pH. Other question is, if pH is okay, is everything else fine? So do I need to only look for the pH value of what I use? Because there's a lot of publicity that's going on saying, hey, I'm pH balanced, therefore I'm good for you. It's not just one attribute that you need to look at when you look at skincare. You need to look at a lot of other attributes, pH being one of them and not the only attribute for you to select the right kind of skincare. Now, how do you know if your skin's pH is upset? What's your skin's mechanism of telling you, listen, hey, my friend, you've been treating my pH rather disrespectfully. Can we get a little balance back on track? Your skin talks to you through two or three mechanisms. The first, the most benign mechanism is you see dry spots appearing on skin. It tells you it's not happy. The second is the color of the skin changing to a slight bit of red. It's showing it's a bit angry and upset. The third, which you don't have to wait for, is larger changes happening, such as pigmentation and you know extreme dry spots happening on your skin. That's not something you want to see. The moment you see the skin lose its natural elasticity, shine, moisture, brightness, that's when you probably need to wake up and think, what did I do wrong today? It's not about beating yourself up. It's really about finding the right balance again and again and again because life is all about balance. Now you can ask yourself, what do I do once I know that it is, how do I get the balance back? And the answer is to first treat it symptomatically. So you start moisturizing your skin back. You remove things that might be irritating your skin, e.g. harsh scrubs, soap laden cleansers, very acidic uh, skincare ingredients that you might be using. So get back to normal. Don't be too ambitious in the first few days. Just get back to normal. Let things settle down. Moisture takes care of a lot of things as we all probably know. Just keeping your skin moisturized is really the first step in ensuring that it nurses itself back to health. The other thing we need to realize about our body is the self-correction mechanisms in place. Our body is built to self-correct itself. You don't need to overcorrect. All you need to do is stay on course and remain balanced. I hope that made some sense. I hope you are able to understand now what pH of 4, or 5 or a 6 means. And I hope you are able to tell acidic from alkaline. And I hope you are, to, you are able to make better choice when it comes to your skincare. And that's all we have for you in this edition of the Lab Coat. Until next time, we have chemistry.